Hey there, welcome back. Um, and like I said last time, we're going to be talking about transcription and translation today. So in eukaryotic cells, the nuclear envelope is going to separate transcription from translation. And so that means that transcription, which is the creation of RNA, happens inside the nucleus. And translation, which is the creation of a protein, is going to happen outside of the nucleus. So transcription is when DNA creates RNA. And RNA is slightly different. Um, DNA, you could think of as kind of like the master control room, the thing that's that's got all the information, all the different things that it needs to do. RNA is like one piece of that information that's being sent out for a particular thing that it wants to build. So RNA is synthesized using some special proteins in the nucleus, and um, the RNA does not have thymine in it. It has uracil. So instead of seeing T's in here, you're going to see U's whenever you see RNA. RNA, unlike DNA, is single-stranded, okay? It's always short. It's only about for one gene, right? DNA contains all these genes. RNA just has one. And RNA is made using ribose instead of deoxyribose. And like I said, it uses U instead of T. Um, we've already talked about kind of our mutation rates, so we're going to skip through that part real quick. Okay, here are some of the mistakes that can be made. Um, we can substitute in the wrong thing. So when we're making this RNA, there might be some substitutions where they put in the wrong base. Sometimes they add extra bases in or they delete. Um, they delete a base and that changes the message, right? So you're getting different amino acids because you put a different base in there. So this is how it works. The stages of transcription are initiation, elongation, and termination. So at the beginning, um, we're going to go to DNA, and there's a promoter on there. Um, and it's going to separate the strands so that we can make our RNA. Okay. One side of the DNA is called the template. And so it's going to start building RNA off of that template. And it's going to move down the line until it gets this long section of RNA. And then we end up with our completed RNA transcript. Okay, initiation is the part where we bind the promoter and we start making our stand, our strand. And elongation, the polymerase is going to move down the way, unwinding the DNA and getting more RNA out of it. And then the final part is termination, which is where the RNA transcript is released and the polymerase detaches. Okay, so promoters are going to be signaling um, the initiation, initiation of this RNA synthesis, um, and those transcription factors help RNA polymerase recognize where they need to start. During elongation, they're just going to be creating one single strand, so we don't have to make two strands at a time, we're only making one. Um, so it's exposing the double helix, but it's also only letting a certain part of it, right, only one side is being used to make the RNA. And then at the end, there's a specific sequence that signals that we should stop. And then we've got the entire RNA transcript ready, and the DNA is just zipped back up again. So as we can see now, we've got our full, our full uh, RNA ready. OK, now at the end, um, each of these RNA molecules needs to be modified a little bit um, to make sure that they have everything that they need. So for instance, they're going to add what's called a cap and a tail, and that makes it so that it can um, so that it can go and do what it needs to do. And it also helps it for when it's going to make um, the protein later on. There's also some more processing that needs to be done. So the original transcript from DNA um, is called a pre-mRNA, and it contains transcripts for a bunch of different things. Um, introns um, and exons are things that are in the code that um, the introns don't need to be there. So it's like this extra stuff that doesn't have to be there. And so the introns have to be removed before um, it can be used to make a protein. So proteins often um, have like a, a modular architecture consisting of a discrete structure and function. So that means um, a, a protein, which is here's one here, it folds and bends in a certain way and that's how it functions. So it needs to function with that. So um, translation then is when RNA um, creates a polypeptide, which is a protein, okay? 
Translation involves that RNA that was made in the, with the DNA, ribosomes, uh, a transfer RNA, and some codons. So here's how it works. Um, in the elongation state, amino acids are going to be added one by one to the preceding amino acid based on what's going through with the code. Then the final stage of all this is termination. So at the final stage, um, we reach the stop codon and it knows that we can let go of the protein and it's done. Okay, so the final step in translation, right, is termination and that's when the ribosome reaches a stop and there's no corresponding transfer RNA. So instead, a small protein called a release factor attaches to the stop codon and that release factor allows the, the uh, polypeptide to leave. So here's a summary of how it all works. Translation uh, or transcription happens in the, in the nucleus. It's where our RNA is formed. Um, the RNA then gets fixed up so it's ready to go. It attaches to a ribosome and builds a protein and then those proteins go off to do whatever they need to do in the cell. Now that new pro, uh, polypeptide is now floating loose um, and it learns what it needs to do and then it goes and, and off and does its job. Okay, polypeptides fold spontaneously into their active configuration, which means that once they're created, they will automatically fold into the shape that they're supposed to be in so they can do their job. And then sometimes they attach other molecules to these. So like they might add sugars or fats or phosphates and all these things so that the protein can do what it needs to do. Uh, transfer RNA is part of this process. Um, and it's just a single strand of RNA that's about 80 nucleotides long and each carries a specific amino acid on it. And these are the guys that are carrying those amino acids so that they can be built into the protein. This is kind of how we represent them. They look like this. And then ribosomes are the ones that facilitate all of this to happen. So they're the protein that helps combine all these, um, all these amino acids together to make new proteins. Here's a picture of what that looks like. And like I said before, we've got our different stages, just like when we were making our, our RNA, there's initiation, elongation, and termination. And like I explained, um, each uh, the start codon will get us our first amino acid, and then from there on, we'll keep on adding more and more. And the information content of the DNA, right, um, is in this form where specific sequences of nucleotides uh, create this protein. And that's how the synthesis of protein is directed by DNA. Thanks for watching again. I uh, hope to see you next time for some more general science.